So Professor Mecha Sejan is full professor for those or principal of chemistry for applied technology at our Department of Civil and Industrial Engineering in the University of Pisa. She has over 20 years of experience in analysis and optimization of industrial chemical process. She co-authored over 100 papers in international journal, book charts, and patent on thermoplastic material. Her research activity are mainly focused on analysis and optimization, including environmental sustainability of chemical processes and on valorization of industrial waste, review to circular economy, and development and validation of bioplastic-based composite for application in agriculture. So, okay, and she you. will present uh, a work on the extraction of polydioxyl canoates from rhodovolum sulfidophilum, so if Sita will correct me, the SM1374 bacteria by non-chlorinated solvents. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Patrizia, for a kind of presentation, and I promise to be very fast, okay? So, I'm going to present to you the preliminary results of our work concerning the extraction of polyhydroxyalkanoids from uh, photosynthetic purple bacteria by using non-chloronated solvents. So, no, it's not work. yes, okay. As you know, the price of a PHAs is still very high mm, compared to the traditional plastics, but also compared to other bioplastics such as PLA that limit their use mainly to high value applications. But we have uh, uh, various actions to increase their use in commodities. And um, in addition, in the next uh, years, given the global growth of uh, bioplastics, we expect to have a very strong increase in the PHA manufacturing capacity. And of course, this will lead to a reduction of the actual uh, production cost uh, for the PHAs. In this slide, you can see other possible actions such as the use of low-cost carbon sources or the development of genetically modified microorganisms or the use of low-cost materials in the composites based on PHAs in order to uh, decrease the cost of the final products. But we have another important action, the development of less expensive and more environmentally friendly um, extraction, PHA extraction processes in alternative to the traditional methods based on the use of a chloroform, of a chloronite solvents, typically chloroform. So in this work, we can find, we try to find um, to um, other alternative solvents respect to the chloroform, no allogenated solvents such as the cyclohexanone and uh, three similar ionic liquids. So in this slide you can see the three similar ionic liquids used in this work. Uh, they are um, synthesized by the colleagues of the Department of Pharmacy, and um, you can see the acronyms of these ionic liquids and the cyclohexanol and the comparison between the some properties of the cyclohexanol uh, compared to the chloroform in terms of a boiling point, vapor pressure, uh, toxic uh, indexes, and uh, viscosity. And of course, the cyclohexanol um, results less volatile and uh, less toxic respect to the chloroform. For this reason, in this uh, work, uh, we have used cyclohexanol, but uh, other works, uh, in other works, uh, the cyclohexanone um, has been used uh, to extract polyhydroxyalkanoids from bacterial biomass. And um, you can see the different mechanisms uh, used in this case. In fact, the cyclohexanone as a chloroform 
uh, solubilizes the PHAs, but no PHA cell um, matter. Um, on the other hand, the ionic liquids um, have the potential to solubilize lipids and proteins, the main compounds of the cell membrane of the bacterium, but um, they are no PHA solvents. So, now, okay. So, the biomass used. The biomass used um, uh, has been supplied by the Research Institute on Terrestrial Ecosystems of the CNR of Florence. We collaborate with this uh, institute um, since many years. And in this case, uh, we have a photosynthetic purple bacterium containing PHAs. It has produced in a batch phototropic growth condition under 16 light and 18 dark cycle in, in view of the uh, experimentation in uh, out of outdoor, and uh, using lactate as a carbon source. And after 120 hours, the biomass was recovered by centrifugation and subsequently lyophilized. And um, we have used the freeze-dried biomass on the basis of the um, analysis carried out by the Research Institute of Terrestrial Ecosystems, we, um, we have a, a, a started biomass, a biomass containing um, about 14% uh, of PHAs. So, in this slide, uh, you can see the procedures used uh, uh, with uh, chloroform and uh, cyclohexanol in order to extract uh, um, polydroxyalkanoate from this biomass. You can see that uh, we have used um, uh, just uh, the ratio solvent biomass of 30 milliliter per gram at a temperature of uh, room temperature, 10, 20 degrees for 24 hour for the chlorochlor. Uh, chloroform extraction. Uh, these are the typical conditions reported in lecture for the chloroform extraction. But um, on the other hand, for the cyclohexanol extraction, we have um, uh, used um, lower ratio solvent biomass and two different temperature, 100 and 125 degrees for different times, 5, 10, up to uh, 30 minutes. And uh, then the extraction step, we have the filtration of the mixture and the vacuum in order to remove, to separate the solubilized PHA from the rest of the mixture and the precipitated PHA, um, the precipitation uh, of the PHA was carried out by methanol addition and then filtration to recover the PHA precipitated and then the cake, the wet PHA cake was washed um, with a small quantity of methanol. So the wet PHA cake was dried at room temperature in the case of the chloroform extraction and 80 uh, degree for the cyclohexanol extraction and the vacuum in order to remove, of course, the solvent used and methanol. So the dried PHAs extracted were characterized by different analysis and you can see the different analysis carried out in order to characterize the PHAs extracted. So in the case of the ionic liquid extraction, in this case we have used this ratio solvent biomass at a temperature of 60 degrees for uh, 4 to 24 hours. In this case, we have a solvent with very high viscosities. In fact, you can see that at 60 degrees, we have very high viscosity of the iron liquids, uh, 58, 50, and 23 centipoas. I remind you that the viscosity of water at room temperature is just one centipoas. Consequently, we have very high viscosity. And the separation of the um, 
unsolubilized pHa from the mixture containing ionic liquids and the cell matter um, was, uh, was uh, carried out by centrifugation and the um, solid rashes uh, were washed uh, four times by resuspension washing using methanol hmm, as an antisolvent. So, Okay, some images of the run with the enium DMP. Okay, so let's see the results obtained. Okay, as expected in the case of the chloroform, we have um, obtained very high uh, PHA recovery yield, 98.5%, but is expected. And, uh, but very good results um, have been um, obtained also by using cyclo hexanol at higher temperature used. In fact, uh, at uh, 125 degrees, after just 10 minutes, uh, we have obtained 95% of a recovery yield of pH is very high. And uh, just after 20 minutes, uh, we obtained the same PHA recovery yield obtained with, uh, by using chloroform. And uh, of course, uh, as uh, shown here, the recovery yields using chloro uh, cyclohexanol as a function of temperature and time as well. So in this slide, you can see a comparison uh, with lecture data. And uh, you can see that the results obtained were are very good compared to the results obtained in other works where the cyclohexanol um, is used um, uh, to extract PHA from different uh, bacteria. And uh, you can see the very good results considering that in uh, our work we have uh, processed a biomass with a very, very low PHA content. 40 uh, weight percent compared to the higher PHA content uh, in the biomass used in the other works. And in addition, we have a used lower ratio uh, solvent on biomass in this work compared to the other works. So, okay. Yes, the first analysis carried out uh, was the proton nuclear magnetic resonance um, in order to evaluate the type of the PHA extracted by cyclohexanol and uh, it resulted PHBHV uh, containing um, about uh, 3 mole percent of HV and um, we have used in this work a commercial PHBHV by Naturplast as a reference samples. In this case, this sample contain about one mole percent of HV. In this slide, you can see the equation used to evaluate also the amount of HV uh, in the PHBHV extracted by chloroform and also by cyclohexanol. So, okay, in this slide you can see the FTR spectra of the starting bacteria, the cell debris, and uh, compared to the FTR spectra curves of the extracted PHB, HV, with uh, using cyclohexanol, chloroform, and also the, P, the FTR spectra of the commercial PHB, HV by Naturplast. And as you can see, the two um, typical peaks bands uh, corresponded to the carbo-oxygen stretching vibrations of the peptide bond and the carbon-nitrogen stretching vibrations and the nitrogen-hydrogen band modes are absent in the PHB uh, V spectrum, uh, PHB extracted by chloroform and by cyclohexanol. And this, confirm, this confirms the high purity of the extracted PHB HV. Okay? So, yes, in this case, yes, in this slide you can see the TG thermogravimetric analysis curves of the 
starting bacteria of the membrane debris and of course uh, of the extracted PHEB HEV using cyclohexanol and chloroform. And you can see the perfect overlapping uh, between the TG curves of the PHEB HEV extracted with the cyclohexanol and the PHEB, the commercial PHEB HEV uh, by um, Naturplast. Mm? Consequently, also, this analysis confirms the high purity of the PHBHV extracted by a cyclohexanol at a higher temperature. So, again, <coughs> the, um, the DSC curves. Also, in this case, uh, you can see the similar curves uh, of the PHBHV extracted by uh, cyclohexanol chloroform compared to the um, DSC curves of the PHB by Naturplast. Um, um, you can see that uh, we have uh, a lower crystallinity in the case of the PHB extracted by chloroform and cyclohexanol respect to the commercial PHB. Um, HV, and this is in accordance with the higher HV content, um, about 3 mol percent of the extracted PHB HVS compared to the commercial sample, um, about 1 mol percent. And also the crystallization processes is kinetically slower than the uh, of commercial sample uh, shown by the lower crystallization temperature respect to the uh, crystallization temperature of the commercial sample. Okay, so about the molecular weight distribution, also in this case uh, we have a similar distribution, molecular weight distribution of the PHB-HV extracted by cyclohexanol chloroform and compared to that of the commercial PHB-HV. And uh, as shown, the cyclohexanol based extraction procedures uh, um, carry out at higher temperature respect to the temperature used in the chloroform uh, extraction didn't adversely affect the average polymer chain length compared to the um, chloroform based extraction carried out at lower temperature. And in addition, the increase of the extraction time from 10 to uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes had not a significant effect on the number average molecular weight and weight average molecular weight. Okay, so in this slide you can see also the equation uh, relating to the MN and MW. So, about the filmability. The filmability um, of the PHBHV extracted due to the very small quantities of the PHBHV extracted um, was evaluated by simply by solvent casting using chloroform as a solvent for the PHBHV. In this case, you can see the films obtained by using uh, the by solvent casting and the films uh, obtained uh, resulted uh, with the same flexibility, opacity, and uh, consistency, mm? uh, similar. Mm? The films obtained from the commercial PHB v by Naturplast and the PHB extracted by cyclohexanol. So, about the results uh, obtained by PHA extraction by ionic liquids. In this case, uh, the results uh, were not so good uh, as uh, those obtained by cyclohexanol because uh, <coughs> the um, dried solid stretches obtained uh, using uh, the ratio um, ionic liquid and biomass 10 and also 30 to 1 uh, contain uh, relevant presence of uh, no PHA cellular matter 
And uh, in fact, um, you can see, for example, the TEG, the thermogravimetrica uh, ca curves uh, obtained uh, for these uh, uh, solid residues recovered after the PHA extraction by ionic liquids are very different to the TEG curves of the PHB-HV extracted by uh, cyclohexanol and um, the TG curves are very similar to the TG curves of the starty biomass and uh, uh, on the membrane debris hmm, obtained after the uh, extraction using uh, cyclohexanol. Okay. And uh, in fact, uh, the, um, the best sample obtained uh, containing about 60% uh, of a P PHB, uh, HV, and the rest is uh, the cellular material. Okay, in conclusion, uh, on the very good results obtained with the cyclohexanol, we can say that the cyclohexanol at 125 degrees is a very interesting alternative, a potential alternative to the chloroform for the extraction of PHA from bacterial biomass with very limited um, extraction times required, about uh, 10 20 minutes, and in addition, is um, simpler, less expensive, the recovery of the cyclohexanol from the mixture cyclohexanol and methanol after the precipitation step of the PHA, because the cyclohexanol and methanol um, don't form any azeotrope. Uh, on the contrary, the chloroform and methanol form an azeotrope, and consequently, the distillation, the typical uh, process used to recover these solvents uh, on the industrial scale, is more uh, expensive in the case of the use of the chloroform respect of the cyclohexanol, and in addition, the distillation itself can provide the solvent at a temperature close to, the, uh, to its boiling point, 155 degrees, without extra heating cost prior to the extraction, and this is good in terms of the cost. So, about the extraction by ionic liquids, of course, uh, further investigation are needed in order to investigate other ionic liquids more, um, more efficient in respect to the ionic liquids used here, or, for example, uh, changing um, the operating conditions, higher temperature, for example, or higher ionic liquid biomass ratio used, so, but in the further, in the future works. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Here you can see the contact, my contact, my male contact, and the contact of Sara Filippi. And I'd like to thank Sara Filippi, my colleague, uh, for, um, for her fundamental contribution in the experimental part of this work, in the discussion of the results, and the writing of this paper published recently on polymers. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. So thanks, Professor Sejani, for this very interesting presentation. We have time just for one question, and then we move our question to during the lunch. It's a pity that Alicante left, because I know they are very inside. So, so Ipsita is for you. <laughs> Okay, but uh, I'm available uh, to answer your question during the lunch, uh, if you want. No, it's a lovely uh, talk, and I think we should talk as well <laughs> about collaboration. Uh, my um, little uh, question was, you saw the medium chain length pH. So this is great for short chain length, because you're melting, you're, you know, heating at 130, which is lower than their melting points. But if yes, you're looking... Course. Looking at medium chain length, this is much higher than their melting point. So you'll perhaps change their, you know, properties. So that was one. And the second is the energy requirement. We're trying to make it all green and sustainable. You're now having to heat large quantities of bacterial freeze-dried cell mass at a very 
high temperature. So just if you could comment on those two things. Thank okay, you. Okay, see, si. yes. Okay, very, very interesting questions. Okay, so about the um, effect of the temperature mm, on the properties of the PHA extracted. Mm? Okay, but um, as uh, I shown you before, um, the high temperature used for the cyclohexanone respect to the uh, chloroform, mm? didn't affect the properties, uh, the distribution of the molecular weight, uh, the melting point, uh, or uh, the crystallization temperature in uh, no strongly mm, effect. Okay, uh, so about the second question. So just for that one, you were dealing with PHBV, which yeah. has a very high melting point, but if you're looking at the medium chain, like the hydroxyoctanoate derivatives, they are melting at 45, 50. So 135 um, is a very high temperature for that polymer. Yeah, but in this case, uh, we, um, we don't uh, have um, any effect in terms of um, melting point or other properties. But I don't know in terms of uh, mechanical properties because the amount of these, uh, of the PHB extracted were very low mm, and uh, is not possible, um, it was not possible to carry out uh, properties to test uh, in order to evaluate the mechanical properties or other properties. But I think, yes, it's possible to that very high temperature used uh, can be influenced at this. Sure. Okay, so Thank we thanks again, Professor Sejani. We are very late, so I have to close, but we first want to...